this conversation. So is all of this an argument about what it means to put America first? And is that a winning 2020 strategy? Here now, Mark Thiessen, American Enterprise Institute scholar, and Richard Fowler, syndicated radio host, both are Fox News contributors. I want to start by playing this from Senator Lindsey Graham, because it goes to the question of whether or not the, what the president has criticized these women for has anything to do with the color of their skin. Watch this. I've said before that if you're a Somali refugee wearing a MAGA hat, he doesn't want to send you back. You probably have dinner at the White House. What does that tell me? That it's about the criticism and the critic, that the president believes that what they're doing is over the top. Richard? Listen, I, I don't believe that. Uh, and let me say this. Uh, my mother immigrated here from Jamaica, and she served this country her entire life as a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. And when those comments were made by the president, both in that tweet and yesterday, I spoke with her. And she said, it felt like I got punched in the stomach after serving this country. And you, what you can't do is take away the feelings of people of color when we hear those type of comments, because those type of comments have real and lasting impacts, as we heard it on the playground. We heard it at work. We heard it at school. And let's be very clear, if an employer had said that, it, if a restaurant owner had said that, if a store clerk had said that, there would be lawsuits. People would get fired. Uh, and it's, it's happened. If you go to the EEOC, there's complaints and there's actual settlements for people using that same language. And our president, the leader of the free world, should not use that language. And nobody should defend it. All right. Period. Mark, Mark, what do you say to that? I don't defend it at all. In fact, yeah. I condemn it. Uh, and I condemn the people you, uh, in the, in the Trump you. rally the other day uh, saying that. Uh, look, I'm the son of an immigrant, too. My mother was a, a war refugee after mm -hmm. World War II from Poland and was a stateless refugee, and America welcomed her here. So immigrants make, are what make this country great. Uh, it's unsettling sometimes because most the vast majority of immigrants are incredibly patriotic and love their country and don't have hate. And they particularly have a love of the country because they've seen what oppression is like or what a lack of opportunity is like and what real discrimination is like. And it's unsettling to see somebody like, like Ilhan Omar, who is a uh, Somali refugee who was welcomed into this country to express so much hostility towards the country that, that welcomed her in and such virulent anti-Semitism. And so the solution is not to say go back uh, home, the solution is to oppose her in the democratic process and show what's makes, what makes America great is that free people are free to be wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's a free person in a free country, and she's free to be wrong. She's free to be a bigot. Uh, and uh, But she's also a, po a political figure, and she's not above criticism. The fact that Donald Trump said something offensive about them doesn't make them saints and doesn't make them above criticism. And, and we should be calling out when she says it's all about the Benjamins, when she says people who support Israel have dual loyalty, uh, those are uh, those are anti-Semitic remarks, and the Congress. House couldn't bring themselves Congress to condemn knew, that. Richard, you know as well as I do, the Congress got all nervous about condemning her for what she said yeah, in that moment. Exactly. And they washed it out and said, oh, well, let's just make it an anti-hate thing. And we're not going to name her um, individually for this. You know, I, I think that was obviously very offensive to a lot of Jewish people in this country um, and to, to a lot of other people as well. So listen, I have two comments here. Comment number one, I think you can disagree with how our country engaged with Israel. You can disagree with how our country engages with any country. Donald Trump has disagreed with how we engage with NATO, and you could still be American. But I think if we really want to root out bigotry in this country, it goes beyond calling names at each other and running people, running against each other in primaries. Let's actually have education. I mean, we saw Donald Trump went to the African American History Museum. I think he should go back. Uh, and if we really want Ilhan Omar to be educated about what anti-Semitism causes, then let's have a trip to the Holocaust Museum. If we really want to change this country, if we really want to bring this country together, let's not throw mud at each other and let's educate each other. Because here's the truth. If we want to make, truly want to make America great, we have to live with each other. We are each other's neighbors. And that well, requires us living true. together. I don't think anybody and, and would disagree with any is of, how of we do that, it. Richard. And absolutely not. Mudslinging and name-calling is not how you do it. And that's yeah, what the president is engaging in. Uh, and on, on either side. Um, Mark, I'll give you the final thought there. Oh, I don't disagree with anything Richard just said, except the problem is, is that what Ilhan Omar and, and the squad, members of the squad have done, it's not just opposition to U.S. policy towards Israel. They're anti-Semites. They, they stand with, I mean, Rashida Tlaib had a picture taken with, with a guy who stabbed three Israeli soldiers. They, they, call, they talk about dual loyalty, that they forgot what country they were, the people who support Israel forgot what country they represent. These are classic, long-term uh, tro anti-Semitic tropes, and well, the these have to be called out. Guilty, if, you, if you want to oppose racism and bigotry, right. Richard, we have but to oppose it in all guilty. cases, the not just when, Donald, when you think Donald Trump said it. The president still not apologized Final to the that. Central Park Five. The Central Park Five, Either, five innocent black has, men who went to jail Rashida for 10 Tlaib years. Rashida Tlaib has not apologized. So, but this 
this is, Omar this has is, not apologized. This is part of the problem. It's a circle. It's a circle. Ocasio Cortez has not apologized Mark, for talking this is, yeah, it's, it's a circle. 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 It